What's the word, y'all? The NBA gave us 15 games today. 15. All 30 teams suited up, and I made it my mission to watch as much basketball from all 15 games. But as you can imagine, I mean, there was one point where there were eight games going on simultaneously. Eight games. Lav, look in. This is six games plus seven at the same time. I Like, I, I love it. But I hate it because I'm not actually watching anything because I'm like, oh, what's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Like, it's impossible. But I'm, I'm recapping 15 games. Um, so as you can imagine, not one singular game got 100% of my attention. So I might miss some stuff. Either way, I just thought it was really cool that the NBA did this. Um, and one thing I really like is the fact that they did it in 15 minute intervals. Sometimes we get to the game or most of the times we get to basketball, we got three games starting at seven, three games starting at eight, and it's impossible to keep up with all of it. But now it's one at six, one at 615, one at 630. And it was completely free to the public. Now the app ended up crashing eventually. Josh Hart just hit his game winner, so I tried to move on to the next game, and I'm I'm getting I'm getting error messages now. So it was going well. It was going real well until right now. But for the most part, I would say W night for the NBA, especially with them trying to promote the message of voting. So shout out to the NBA for today. Before we get into it, let me tell you about our sponsor, Prize Picks. Hit the link in the description, download the Prize Picks app, and use code Kenny at checkout because they're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. Price picks is daily fantasy where it's just you versus the numbers. You pick some of your favorite or least favorite NBA players. You pick something like points, rebounds, assists. You look at the number and you tell them if you think the person's going to get more or less than the number. And with a night like tonight, where all 30 NBA teams are playing, the options were endless. And I spent a lot of time to create my perfect lineup. But I kept it extremely, extremely simple. Um, and one of mine, I got three all-stars. Like, ah, all of them going to perform. So I picked DeJounte Murray, points, rebounds, assists. He got me that one with Trey Young being out. Jason Tatum, fantasy points. He ended up getting that. And Anthony Davis's points without LeBron in the lineup. And I was all in the green. Of course, it's not just basketball. We got the NFL. We had the MLB. But they they done for some time. We got CSGO. We got NHL. It's a lot of different options on the Prize Picks app. So you need to join in on the fun. So hit the link in the description download the price picks app and use code kenny at checkout because they're matching all deposits up to a hundred dollars like i mentioned some of these games got a lot more watch time than others like the first game of the day watch was versus charlotte hornets this is one of those games where, like i could be a little bit late to the party because both of these teams are missing their star players bradley bill and held to say the protocol and of course we got Lamelo ball still out with his injury even though his jewelry was crazy there is very rare it's very rare for me to be watching an NBA game and see a player on the court and think to myself, who the hell is that? It didn't happen this game. It happened a few days ago when Jordan Jordan Goodwin was getting minutes for the Washington Wizards. I had never heard the name before. I Googled it, and it turns out he's an Illinois boy, so shout out to him. But the, the reason I mention him today is because off the bench, he was 7-for-7 seven from seven from the field with 17 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds, and they ended up winning the Washington Wizards. The next game was a battle of two top three picks, Palo versus Jabari Smith Jr. And if we just strictly going on that matchup, well, Palo absolutely destroyed, destroyed it with 30 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. I mean, there are so many points where I watch Palo and I'm like, this dude is not 19 years old. There's no way. People are saying he's a Carmelo Anthony disciple because of the way he moves and his body size and stuff. And I could kind of see that, of course. But boy, oh boy, he's like in a league in his own when it comes to 19-year-olds. I mean, I saw a stat that he has put over 20 points up on the board in every single game in his career. And it was like an elite club that have also done that. But he got another 30 piece. And yeah, this wasn't just Jabari Smith Jr. versus versus Paolo Bancaro. It was a lot deeper than that. It was the Jalen Green game. And he's been somewhat slow to start off with for the season. But in this one, he ended up with, with 34 points. And early in this one, I'm like, man, Eric Gordon will not stop shooting. He kept hitting him. Alperen Sengun is always going to give you a good performance. And the Houston Rockets won this game. I One thing I don't love about the Orlando Magic, at least in this game, is Kevon Harris was getting minutes over RJ Hampton. It just it didn't feel right, especially with Kevon not having a good game. And RJ, I think RJ can at least hoop a little bit, enough to be in the rotation. Not today, I guess. OKC blew a game to the Detroit Pistons. And I was so very close to put out a tweet. I cannot believe how bad the Detroit Pistons look. And in the second half, they turned it all the way up. I like that Sadiq Bay 
was running a lot with the second unit. I think that helped out the fluidity between lineups a ton. I don't know if that was the first time Dwayne Casey had done that this season. I'm gonna be candid. I haven't watched a ton of Detroit Pistons basketball at least until today, and they look they look good, especially in that second half, man. Sometimes I be looking at Shea and I be feeling for him, bro. He's already locked in. He said he's down for the OKC rebuild, but like a game like tonight, we had 16 points in the first quarter and he ended up with 33, and not a single other person in the start lineup cracked double digits. I'm like, man. It's kind of rough out there. But then again, I'm looking at this game and not the previous couple games where they, they were ended up winning. So I'm not being uh, pessimistic about them, but it's just like a game like this where Shea gives you 33, 7, and 5, you want someone else to step up and nobody else really did. And the Detroit Pistons really turned it up come second half. The Pelicans disappointed me tonight, man. They really disappointed me tonight. Giving up 129 points to the uh, the Indiana Pacers is kind of crazy. I mean, I say kind of because the Pacers have one of the highest paces in basketball. They have Tyrese Halliburton, who's very good on the break. He's very good at finding his teammates and everything. So, I'm, but, but it's still like, if we're looking at the talent between one roster versus another, you take the Pelicans 100% of the time. But in this one, they they. Didn't look good. I am actually somewhat worried about one thing in their lineup. And I know we're two weeks into the season. Um, but the Zion Valanciunas front court scares me a little bit. Uh, because because Zion is not a plus defender like we want him to be. And Val is not fast on his feet. You know what I'm saying? He's more of a, a body on body center instead of a move your feet type thing. And I think they need a move your feet type guy in those lineups. I mean, Jackson Hayes to get no PT. I don't know if he's injured or something like that, but he kind of helps out a little bit there. But, I mean, you giving up that many points. The offense is going to be elite. Like, I have no problems with the Pelicans' offense, even though they take no threes. When you got CJ, Brandon Ingram, and Zion, you're going to score a lot in the mid-range area and in the paint with Z. But, like, the, the defense, man, the defense, they have to buckle down if they want to do the things that they want to do. But I had to get a lot of love to Miles Turner, bro. Giving up, uh, scoring 37 points tonight is insane. Shout out to him. Joel B was back, and they beat the Phoenix Suns. Now, the Phoenix Suns is beat up as all hell, man. Cam Johnson, get well soon. He's going under the, uh, the knife for his meniscus, I'm pretty sure. Chris Paul went out with right heel soreness. Like, they're already extremely, extremely thin right now. And then you cannot afford for Jacques Landale, Damian Lee, and DeAndre Aiden all to be in extreme foul trouble. But that's what happens when you go against Joel B. 16 for 16 from the line from Joel. First game back, he was dominant in that sense and drawing the fouls and get it to the spot that he needed to get to. And they end up winning this game without a Tyrese Maxi game. He was 4 for 18 because George Niang off the bench. I don't know what the fourth quarter number was. I think he hit five threes, five or six threes in the fourth quarter. That's friend of the show, by the way. Uh, George Niang was elite today. And it's a very big win because uh, I was wondering how they would look without James Harden. And I had to remind myself, they played without James Harden for half the season last year, you know, before the James Harden trade, no Ben Simmons, and they were damn good then. And this roster is very similar and maybe even a little bit better um, than that one. So I think they'll be fine, especially if Joel Embiid is, is looking like an MVP. And even though a lot of them was at the free throw line, I say that this was an MVP caliber perfor performance from Joel. The Atlanta Hawks take out the last undefeated team in basketball. The Bucks have fallen. And this is the, the luxury that you have when you have a guy like DeJounte Murray because there was no Trey Young today. And you keep reminding yourself, oh, snap, DeJounte Murray was an all-star caliber player, all-star, not just all-star caliber. He literally was an all-star on Spurs teams last year that the talent level wasn't too crazy. And he ended up getting them into the play-in. Like, if it's him and no other all-stars, he is damn good. And today he ended up with 25, 11, and 8. One thing that I really love about DeJounte season so far even though he only shot 33 percent from the three this game it's his willingness to take threes because he wasn't really doing that in san antonio he did his, his work in the mid-range which he's still doing but now he's taking more threes per game than he's ever done in his career and i thought that was more just a product of him playing off the ball more with trey young but in this one he was ball handling, and there was a couple times where he stopped in transition to shoot threes. I'm like, that's not the DeJounte we know. And I think he hit one of the two in transition, which is really good. But we can't go and talk about this game without mentioning A.J. Griffin. The man A.J. Griffin popped up on my TikTok for you page a couple days ago, and he was reading his favorite scripture. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I see what you want off the court. I don't really see you on the court. And he got the opportunity today, 31 minutes 11, I'm sorry, 10 for 15 from the field. He had two threes. He was getting to the basket. He was running the transition. Jalen Johnson has some really good possessions guarding Giannis. Like, you don't win this type of game normally without Trey Young in the lineup. But the Atlanta Hawks look damn, damn good today. They look really, really good. And listen, 
the, we knew the Bucks weren't going 82 and one. I mean, 82 and 0, but 81 and one is still a possibility. Um, and Chris Middleton, every day we're getting closer and closer to his return. Josh Hart. It's, it wasn't even just Josh Hart because Josh Hart hit the biggest shot of the game. But Anthony Simons, fourth quarter. What was it? 12 points in the fourth quarter. And the possession before Josh Hart's three, one that people are looking over, is Jeremy Grant three-pointer in that corner. Damian Lillard only gave them 19 points on 33% shooting. And the other stepped up, bro. It, it's happening again. Wins are wins at the end of the day. It don't matter if it's on a buzzer beater three or... or a buzzer beater, five foot jump shot from Jeremy Grant a couple nights ago. Wins are wins, and they're they're stockpiling them right now. The Portland Trailblazers look good, and you know what? For the majority of this video, I was really like shaking my head at the defense, and it still wasn't great. Um, and then this in the fourth quarter, it got a little bit better. But the real thing come fourth quarter was the offensive explosion. Like I, I saw a tweet that was about their offensive rating in the fourth quarter alone it was in the literal 270s the offensive rating in the fourth quarter was 276 y'all they was unstoppable come fourth quarter time and again Anthony simons was heating up jeremy grant uh hit a big time shot and of course josh hart with the open three down the stretch and, and he hit that they doing the dame time on the wrist gotta give a lot of love to justice winslow because he continues to be great off the bench there was one particular play Oh, my God. I wonder if I can find this play. I don't remember what quarter it was in. I don't even remember who hit the shot. Josh, uh, uh, Justice Winslow said an amazing... Matter of fact, I'm finding that shot. I don't care. This is a play in question. This was created because of Justice Winslow right here. And it was actually a really, really good set or play. I'll I, I be misusing those words. Here we go. So, we're going to start off with uh, Justice Winslow getting downhill on Duncan Robinson because you understand... Trent Wofford with the pass and then the screen to set up an Anthony Simons three. Like, that was a big-time shot because at that point, they were down by, like, 14 points a little bit before that, and they keep cutting into the lead. The Heat in their last – I think they said in the last three games of the Heat, it's all been decided within three points. This game was rough, rough for them, especially because, like I said, they were up by 14 points, and the offense just didn't – really do the thing and i mentioned the offense for the blazers was so damn good and that's partially because the defense for the miami heat was so damn bad so uh they got to figure it out and i do want to cut them some slack because i took this screenshot today this was their bench tonight this was their bench tonight um so i w without tyler hero being in the lineup it's a little bit rough duncan robinson drew smith nikola jovich hayward highsmith and dwayne detman those were their reserves tonight <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? If you don't get a great game from Bam or Jimmy, which you didn't, it, it was going to be rough to win that game regardless. But when you end up up by 14 and then end up losing, it's not great. The Bulls. What a bounce back from the Bulls. I, I really like these mini series that the NBA has been doing where it's one game against the, the same team or two games against the same team back to back um, because it allows coaches to make adjustments in game number one against the Raptors yesterday they dogged us on offensive glass the second chance points was crazy and it was a point of emphasis for the Chicago Bulls to prevent that and we did and we won it's really that simple it's cool to see Zach Levine have his first 30 point game of the season low-key felt like a very underrated 30 why I looked up and he had 30 points it didn't feel like he had 30 but he did I uh, love that win for the Bulls I uh, cannot wait for us to get relatively healthy and I mean just having Drummond back and having Kobe White back you know those players at least rotational players for us the Celtics almost blew a game to the Memphis Grizzlies. There's only one moment in this game that I really care about that scared the hell out of me. It was uh, John Morant dove into Jason Tatum's knee, and Jason Tatum was on the ground holding it. And I was like, don't, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. He got up, proceeded to miss two free throws. But at the end of the day, they won. I mean, he missed two. So he got hit. He held his knee on the ground. He missed two free throws, and then he got cooked on the defensive side of the ball. I'm like, oh, snap. Not like this. Not like this. I hope he's okay. Um, I'm praying he's okay because Jason Tatum is super fun to watch. But the Celtics end up winning behind a Grant Williams two free throws down the stretch after he had went zero from zero from the field. He was he played 37 minutes and didn't hit the shot until he got fouled for free throws with like three seconds to go. I mean, that's just playing your role, playing defense. I couldn't imagine it. I can imagine it. Like just playing basketball but not getting any looks at the rim. Selfless player right there. This is the point where League Pass decided to walk out. So some of these games I didn't get no eyes on because I went like 30 minutes or so without being able to, to watch anything. But I did get to watch a little bit of Knicks versus Timberwolves. And I mean a little bit because once I saw Julius Randle hit five threes in the first quarter, I was like, this game is over. And that's saying something because the Knicks have a reputation of blowing 20-point leads. But I looked at who they were going against. 
And I looked at the fact that they let Julius Randle hit five threes on them. I was like, this over. Tom Thibodeau's evolving a little bit. I don't know if his job is safe for the remainder of the season. But he started Cam Reddish. He, he started um, Quentin Grimes the night before, or the game before. And Jericho Sims started because Mitchell Robinson was out. This is not the Thib Thibodeau thing. I'm surprised he ain't tried to make a trade to get Todd Gibson back on the roster when he saw when he saw his center go down. But instead, he played the young guys, and the young guys helped them win tonight. The, the, the Timberwolves' effort level is just, like, terrible. I know there's that viral clip of Anthony Edwards from the previous game. It, it wasn't any moments like that, really, but it's their effort is terrible. D'Angelo Russell has been bad, even though today he had 4-3, so shout out to him. He's been bad. I know they're missing Carl Anthony Towns, but, boy, even with – I mean, not Towns, uh, Rudy Gobert, but that uh, – I'm just not feeling good, and, and I might make an entire video on the Timberwolves in the next couple days. I made a TikTok about Michael Porter Jr. shooting 50% from three, and today he shot 50% from three. Uh, so he's doing his thing. Jokic gave us 26, 10, and 8 in a couple really good buckets down the stretch. This is one of the games where I had to tune out of because of League Pass, so my apologies. But eventually, League Pass came back too. And the Nets lose to the to the um, Mavericks. I just want to say Josh Green. We've made videos talking about Josh Green a couple times. One last season, one early this season. This might have been his be the best game of his career. 16 points, 5 rebounds, 2 uh, two assists. Was chirping at Kevin Durant and everything. And they end up winning this game. This is actually one of the first games of the season where they shot over 40% from 3. So they've been winning games without their star shooters hitting any shots. Like Reggie Bullock today, 0 for 3. But like Dorian Finney Smith hit 2. Luka hit 5 in himself. Actually, I'm taking that. I'm taking that back. If Luca's giving you five of the threes, this was a bad shooter performance from everybody else. Luca gave them five of them, but uh, Spencer Dinwiddie missed. Reggie Bullock missed. Uh, they've been able to win games without their shooters really shooting, which is a good thing. Eventually, those shots will eventually fall. Luca's still amazing. Kevin Durant missed the free throw, and he I think it said he hit 64 free throws in a row before then, and he missed it. But even with him missing it, they still have an opportunity to win because they get the offensive rebound, and then Royce O'Neal tries to do too much. But I can't be mad at Royce. He's been really good um, post Kyrie suspension. I actually like watching the Brooklyn Nets a lot more. This, oh man, this feels like I'm saying I hate Kyrie basketball, but like they feel more complete and team oriented with the lineup that they're running now. And Brooklyn Nets fans, y'all let me know if I'm bugging as an outsider. But like even getting Cam Thomas finally getting some minutes after he wanted to be freed is dope. Royce O'Neal had two of his best games of his career back to back. You the and Ivy stepping up. Like this feels like KD and the kids. I, I always say KD and the kids because of alliteration. But like, come on, they got vets in here. Joe Harris is a vet. Royce O'Neal is a vet. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, Kevin Durant and the kids dating back to like even last season or the year before that always feels cool because because of the way Kevin Durant has been playing or the teams he's been playing with, it was rare that we saw Kevin Durant now with another star. You know what I'm saying? So this is our opportunity, and he's been damn good if you look past the fact that he missed those free throws. The Warriors beat the Kings um, behind a Steph Curry 47-point game. 47, 8, and 8, zero turnovers. Now, Klay Thompson, Klay Thompson tried to sell his game. He, he fouled Kevin Herter. I'm saying that right now. He fouled Kevin Herter. I, I know the last two-minute report is going to say that, too. Kevin Herter should have shot three free throws, and I don't know what's going to happen if he did get to that free throw line. Uh, Kevin Herter was 0 for 0 on the line for the for the game. I don't know what he's shooting for the season. It's a tough break for the Kings um, because they were leading in this one for a, a big portion of it, and then Steph Curry turned up. And they got a couple and ones and Wiggins to the shot here. And, and Draymond coming out of halftime was looking really good defensively. And, is, hey, if you can run their starting unit 48 games of 48 minutes a game, they'll never lose. But you do have to rely on, like, Anthony Lamb today. I looked at the game. I, I kid you not. I was I tuned into that game. So Anthony Lamb on the court and, and thought to myself, who the hell is that? Before they zoomed in on those faces, I'm just seeing the number 40. I'm like, who the hell is that? It was Anthony Lamb. And Anthony Lamb was getting minutes over Moses Moody. He was getting minutes over Jonathan Kaminga. That's not a good sign when you spend lottery picks on these dudes a couple years ago and you're relying on them to hit that next step for you to be a championship contender again. I, If they would have lost this game, they would have got their own dedicated video on this channel, best believe it. And I might still do it because, like I mentioned, Kevin Herter got fouled. Um, the Lakers lost again. And I want to show you something because I knew the Lakers were going to lose from one moment tonight. Let me show you what it was. <laughs> I just realized that the... That the Utah Jazz are in first place. Oh, my God. The Jazz are in first place right now. That is crazy to say out loud, bro. Shout out to the Jazz. They deserve their own dedicated video, too. And I almost dropped one yesterday, um, but it was too late. This is the moment I knew they were losing this game. 
This is an all-time bad starting lineup. This is an all-time bad starting lineup. My boy Mike, my boy Mike was like, damn, I can't believe the Bulls gave up on Troy Brown Jr. And shout out to him. He's been playing really solid. But I can't believe this is what y'all looking at. Troy Brown Jr. is like, damn, we, we stole him. You know what I'm saying? No LeBron. Russ came off the bench and had another good uh, first quarter. I don't even remember what he did for the rest of the game. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's rough over there in LA for sure. I probably still would make that Utah Jazz video while I can because they are. I just don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I mean, I do understand because I watched them the last couple games, but like it's still impressive as hell. Them boys move the ball as if they're a college team. They're well coached. There's there's selflessness, and that's saying a lot with Jordan Clarkson on your team. You know what I'm saying? Jordan Clarkson go get his shots, but he's been playing selflessly. Um, Laurie Markin is still killing the game. Tht's revenge, a couple big dunks, some some pickpocket steals. Come on, man. You love to see it. I love an underdog story. Through 12 games, through 12 games, the second best team in basketball. What the heck? Through 12 games, this is the second best team in basketball. I cannot believe it. Anyway, um, the Cavaliers blew their game. Boy, oh boy, that was a rough watch. You know what? They were up by 12 or four minutes ago, and I was tempted to just start this video then. But I was like, you know what? Let's get the Clippers the benefit of the doubt because you never really know what happens because it's, it's basketball at the end of the day. And the Clippers did the thing, man. They got a couple tough-ass AM ones down the stretch. Terrence Mann had a really good game. It was at 16 or so points and a couple of those coming in the fourth quarter. And then Paul George um, almost, well, he did foul and tried to get his game away. But down the stretch, Norman Powell in the fourth quarter, six or seven from the free throw line. They shot 22 free throws in the fourth quarter to the 14. For, oh, yeah, foul game. Duh, stupid. Uh, yeah, we were talking about how good the Cavs are in the clutch. This one wasn't a good one. They had a couple crucial, crucial turnovers. Jared Allen missed a bunny at the rim. But even with all that being said, they're still 8-2 and two and still looking damn good. That is a recap of all 15 games one way or another. Man, oh, man, was that rough. You know what? No, it wasn't rough because my job is to sit here and watch basketball all damn day. So I'm, I'm extremely, extremely grateful. I want to say thank you so much for everybody. Um, there will be a video tomorrow, even though there's no games tonight. And I think this is where things get really fun because I got to get creative. I can't just say, hey, this is what happened in tonight's slate of games. Let's get creative, baby. We might talk about the Warriors. We might talk about the Jazz or something. We're going to have something to upload. Best believe it.